we were studying last time how a very amazing confusion that Vedanta reaches is that the human being is knowledge. He doesn't have to gain knowledge. He is knowledge. What a human has to do is remove the ignorance and what remains is knowledge. Now, this ignorance in us manifests, or the way to understand it is through its manifestation. So how does it manifest in us? It manifests in us as desires. Now, from here on, it becomes easy to understand. Because as long as a desire is playing in our head and the stronger that desire is, the less we can see things for what they are. Suppose you were to meet the world's purest person, very, very, I mean, an excellent person. You met Christ or you met Rama, Krishna, you met a very pure person. And it so happened that that pure person did not give you any attention. You were trying to speak to him or her and then you didn't. Uh, the person didn't speak to you for whatever reason. What will be your view of that person? What do you think? You will go away saying, oh, this wonderful person, such a wonderful person, but I never got a chance to speak to him. Or you'll go away saying, 
Yeah, yeah, they talk big, but really, there's nothing there. Now, when you, when our personal desires are interrupted, the world's purest person in our eyes will become impure. When somebody fulfills our desires, the world's most impure person will become pure in our eyes. So this ignorance which is there us manifests as extremely strong desire. And these desires are like a parda in front of our eyes, a curtain in front of our eyes. We can't see through it. Those, of our, those who fulfill our desires will become automatically good people. And those who do not fulfill our desires will automatically become bad people. So a common example, right? Suppose there's a couple, they break up. How many couples after breakup say exactly the same nice things that they said about each other when they were in love? Now, why can't we say, I mean, if you thought this person had X, Y, Z quality because you are not getting along with that person, why was that quality gone? That is still there, right? But no. If you do not cater to my desires, I will not see even the most obvious good quality about you. If I'm dying to start a business, like I'm really keen on starting a particular business. Very interesting. There was, I remember, I was very young and somebody told me that if you do vermiculture, or something, that, um, you know, the worms grow at this rate, and the price of the worm, vermiculture in the market is X and they grow at this rate. So if we just invest so much in it, then it will grow at such a fast rate and uh, you will make so much money in so much time. And also, the number sounded fabulous. So I told my father that, uh, see, it's going to make so much money. You give me this much money and then I'll put it in and then I'll make so much money. <laughs> so he told me, Okay, so now the price, so so is this man making other people also start it? So he said, yeah, 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 everybody's going to do it. So he said, okay, so at the current level of supply, this is the price of this in the market. If all of you all start making it, how do you know that this price is going to stay the same? That confused me so much. How do I know it's going to stay this? When all of us flood the market with all this thing, how will the price stay the same? It has to come down, right? So when you are getting, when you want to do a particular thing, you will find all the information, which is suitable to that particular thing. Which will prove that particular thing. So if you are an intelligent person, then every time you want to do something, Every time you're sure this is the right thing to do, you will find reasons on why it may not be the right thing to do. You hear this on television, right? You see it all the time. People who want to prove something will find all the data that proves it. And people who want to disprove it will find all the data that disproves it. And I don't know about you, but I find it fascinating. It's a fat Fantastic. You read two people's view of something. It's really fascinating. How oh, it is that the same thing two people are seeing in a completely different manner. And they're both giving facts. And they're concluding something completely different. So, what is the moral of our story? Please question and see what things are actually that's the moral of the story. What is the moral of the story? What is the point we are trying to establish over here? When we want something, we cannot see for what it is. Yes. When the ignorance plays, truth cannot be known. As long as we have vastness, we will never know the ultimate truth. But this statement we can't understand. We say, oh, I don't know asnas, I don't know the self, I don't know this true or false. Okay. So because it's so abstract, we make it concrete. We say, okay, what happens if you have ignorance? Ignorance manifests as? Desires. Desires. What is everybody else doing? Only Deepraj is listening to me. 
okay ignorance manifests as desires now once desires start playing now you see how the vision of truth is impaired very easy right you want to buy something you cannot afford it but will you know that you cannot afford it you will do some convoluted logic to prove how you can afford this thing so we don't understand how when you remove ignorance you know the ultimate truth but this we can understand that when the desires play we can't see things for what they are it blurs our vision this is understandable right everybody understands this right no i mean no anybody debates this no right everybody is okay with this idea so therefore you understand now if you can understand this you understand why arguing with anybody is absolutely futile if you are at 50% okay and that person is 20% then there is no nothing you can say that will convince that person who is at 20% but if that 20% person becomes 50% just like you you don't need to make any argument it will be obvious to both of you now suppose there is somebody at 70% who is trying to explain something to us we want to we will argue and argue and argue but when we become 70% this will again become self evident so you may you may have yourself noticed that there's many many times you know something is true but you don't know to give any reason for it you're seeing something you may not give any reason you haven't come to it by reason therefore you don't know what is the reason but you come to it through perception i don't know if you remember we studied this earlier you just saw it like that and you can't explain it but it is what you are seeing so the more vasanas the further we are from truth how do we know that because as desires rage we cannot see what is in front of our eyes even the most simple things such as you're rushing out in the morning okay you say where are the car keys where are the car keys you know, somebody has to come and give you the car keys but you can't see them lying on the table there when i would play up can't see okay so we we believe things because of our level believe or disbelieve them. our level is determined by you're muted i can't knowledge intellect by intellect our level of intellect determined by desire intellect desire very how much vasna is there so based on that you will see things correctly or incorrect so far so good and we proceed i mean proceed means we are saying the same thing at this so who are your friends then those who are at this at similar vasna level so what will happen you all will agree on something you all will mock all those people who don't agree with that thing because they are your friends so similar vasna level so anybody not at that level either lower or higher you think what fools they are because you there's no way you're going to see it that's why they said tell me who your friends are and i will tell you who you are so in my mind you can tell right so shall we proceed so even people from different backgrounds because they have uncovered that much of the self they will still be friends with each other that's right that is why you look at us in class everybody is from some different place jay is madhya pradesh mm. i mean different religions different geographies different ages different languages different background different socio economic conditions qualification yeah 
So all all different, everything is different about him. And yet, there is something that binds us together. So that's, that's a very, very interesting thing. So normally, people keep asking, you know, who is your target audience? And I can't answer that question. They say, you must do this marketing to your target audience. Oh, who is my target audience? I don't know. Look at everybody in class. Can you find anything similar amongst them? Is their age similar? Is their gender similar? Is their background similar? What is similar? Nothing is similar. Except for one thing. They have an interest in Vedanta. That's the only thing. If you were to unhear everybody's... I mean, like, even from... India itself, you see, it's all over the place. Not even like everybody from Mumbai or everybody from Delhi. It's all over the place. And now we have people from Europe and London. It's also thing. And Middle East. How am I forgetting Middle East? Middle East, everywhere. By Middle East, I mean. What is that? UAE. Is Lebanon Middle East? Lebanon or no, Lebanon. Okay. So we have a large actually. We have all from UAE and Lebanon. Oman. Huh? Oman. Oman. No, no. Lebanon is. Yeah, nearest. Right. Near. Oman. Okay. Yeah. So can you imagine where all, where all everybody has come from? And new people who we don't even know where they are from. So nothing common. And yet something common. Even in the class, each one will make their own groups of who are my friends here and who are not my friends here. Milan, do you want to say something? Oh, no, no. Finished? Okay. Right, so let's read further. Vasna's manifest is desires. When there are overriding desires, it becomes impossible to see things as they are. When desires diminish, we see the world for what it is. This is such an amazing thing, right? When you look at the world, some part of the world looks so glamorous and so attractive to us. You know, there is, um, yesterday, um, I had to go somewhere. So I asked, um, I, I, I hired a temporary driver. And um, you can remove this, Mahesh, um, with this temporary driver. And he told me his whole life story. I don't know what there is about my personality. The moment I meet people, they tell me their entire life story. He had this girlfriend who he broke up from and she wanted a BMW, but he was not capable of a BMW. And so now they have split and, uh, and he drove me back. Now in our building, it so happens that you know how difficult staff is, right? So these people have put up a system that, you, that on our keychain, there is a button, you press the button and the door opens. Why we did this is because we cannot afford to have guards. So we put the system. So we press the button, the door opens. So when he drove in, okay, he pressed the button and the door opened. He said, see, in these cases, I uh, agree with my, uh, my um, girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend. See what money can buy. To him, it looks so glamorous. So attractive that there's a building. You press the button and the door will open. So attractive, so glamorous, such, such a like aspirational thing. Now, for those of us who live in the building, do we even notice this thing? We just all all we are interested in is is this door opening quickly or not opening? Is it opening because of the button? Is it opening because of the card? Who cares? Can you see that? I mean, uh, that amazing glamour to this whole thing. So attractive. 
somebody is going in a bee on top of you. Wow. What is wrong with this? I can't understand. Can you say for certain that everybody going in a BMW, everybody li living in a nice building is going to be happier than you? Can you ever make that statement? And yet, when you have a desire for something, that thing looks so attractive. There's no getting away from it. You can't stop that person and say, this is a useless thing, what do you want to do? They don't, they think you're mad for saying that. Imagine that girl, she had this boy. He seemed like a nice boy. She left him and try, is trying now to find a boy who has a BMW. Is it necessary that she'll be happier with the person with the BMW than with a person without a BMW? Who knows? It's so attractive. I don't know. BMW is a big thing here. Is it a big thing in Europe to have a BMW? I notice in other countries, people have these cars and they don't make a big deal of it. Here, there seems to be some glamour value. Is it a big deal to have a BMW in Europe? Yes? Tesla. Tesla is coming on the way. Ah, Tesla, yeah. A big deal to have a Tesla. So, so much attraction. For what? What are you going to get out of it? And if you tell somebody who's attracted to it, what will you get out of it? It's like holding a child and say, uh, you know, there's nothing in the doll. What's in the doll? Will the child ever understand this? It is impossible. For that child, do you remember when you were a child? I remember when I was a child. Somebody came from the Middle East to my house and brought me a gift. Now, this was like, I shouldn't say, you know, how many decades ago, many decades ago, and there were not so many foreign things available in this country and this doll. And the great thing about this doll is, if you make her lie down, she goes to sleep, her eyes closed. And if you make her stand up, then the eyes open. Can you imagine what attraction? And she had blonde hair, and she was white, and she had blonde hair, and if you make her sleep, if you make lie down, then she close her eyes. If you make a stand, she will. A fascination. Now, can you tell that child there is nothing in this doll? We can't, right? Similarly, today nobody can tell us whatever it is in the world we are fascinated with. There is nothing there. Nothing there. That is what it's saying. When there are overriding desires, it becomes impossible to see things as they are. Have you noticed that a person who doesn't have a partner thinks that if I had a partner, my life would be spoiled? A person who doesn't have health thinks if I had health, my life would be spoiled. A person without money thinks if I had money, I'll be fine. But the man with the, the person with who doesn't have a partner doesn't look at a person who has a partner and is he very happy. The person who doesn't have money doesn't look at the money person and say, is he very happy? Whatever we don't have somehow seems to hold that secret of happiness. We don't get it. It is not there. Yes, but as you always say, when uh, we transform uh, to higher ideas, then there is a kind of detachment. We don't anymore are impressed by anything because mm -hmm. we are focusing on a goal. Like mm -hmm. if you give a, a, a lesson to the president, I mean, you. You go to his palace and you don't see the palace because you're focused on helping him with his backache. So you only see a person who cares where he's, he lives because this is the higher aim you are looking for. So you also, I mean, maybe being a transmitter helps you go beyond because you don't see it as um, 
any more um you see it as it is actually no nothing to do with being a transmitter it is to do with the level of vastness mm. if your level of vastness is low you can be in any occupation you will see the essential thing mm. you'll say you're the person who needs help never mind what is his income and never yes. mind what what am i supposed to do with it yes you, you as vasnas decrease as our desires decrease Mm. we start seeing things correctly as they are yes first you start meeting human beings mm you no know, first we only meet the car then you start meeting the human being after some time the more interest in which car he has and who he is so as the level of desires falls you begin to see something else so that's exactly the point we're making mm. that when the desires are raging cannot see it for what it is mm. and when the desires come down completely mm. see it is the lord himself you can't see anything else mm. you whatever you see wherever you go you only see the lord so but depending on the level of desires will be what this it becomes higher level yes mm. because as the oneness grows you will have to see something which is more universal right mm. so as you see that thing which is more universal and grow and grow and grow you finally come to oneness complete oneness mm. Mm. okay that is the you're saying the other side mm. yeah this is emphasizing the dark side you are mm. emphasizing the light side this is emphasizing how when desires are raging You just can't see and just can't see it, and all the argument will get us nowhere. Like so, when there are overriding desires, overriding desires, it becomes impossible to see things as they are. When these desires diminish, we see the world for what it is. You see the world for what it is means it is not attractive. When you see the moon from here, it is so beautiful. But if you go over there, it's only rock. There's no, no water also. You see the world for what it is. Then our thoughts, our knowledge begins to reveal the ground reality. When the desires drop, you begin to. It's like your eyes are opening. And you suddenly see it. Every man is a philosopher when the problem is someone else's. Problem is someone else means somebody has a desire which is being interrupted. We are very philosophical about it. When there is no personal involved, no personal interest involved, anyone can be fair. Anyone can be stoic. the thing is when other people are suffering we can look at them and say what are you suffering from this is all unimportant things no very very easy to talk like that <laughs> but when it comes back to us that is when the problem arises ya taruna um yes ma'am um, we are talking about people uh, who are excited about things being their desires are uh, overriding uh, my question is about what about the people who are generally not enthusiastic or people in the older age not about everyone but most cases or many cases they are not about a very enthusiastic or uh, aspiring to do anything so what happens in their case are they all sorted or in which mode they are in are they in tamas or incapable of uh, pursuing I means basically there is no desire sometimes you feel there is no desire in them yes so what's the case with those people uh, it need not be age related taruna everybody in the class who is older than you is that's why i said it is not with everyone but sometimes people um, Yes, yes, yeah, we all experience that. It is, it is the consequence of a rajasic life. 
when our life has been rajasic, that means we have chased our desires, we have got agitated in this whole process. The consequence of rajas eventually is tamas. Because how much can you run? How much can you push your body? How much can you push your mind? The consequence of rajas eventually is action stops. A common example is all these people who need to work very hard on the weekdays. Weekends, they have to take a holiday. They can't function on the weekend. They have to take a holiday. But if, mm-hmm. So when you live a life like that, imagine now you're 30, 40 years with so much stress on your head. You've been running, running, with so much stress on your head. You've had it. You, have, you don't care anymore. But on the other hand, if you have lived a life of unselfishness, of purity, if you have, you know, lived a life of service, you will be enthusiastic till the last day. You Mm -hmm. are ready to go for anything, ready to to do anything, or you are okay with everything. Uh, You know, when Socrates was given him law, then he, everybody was crying, right? And then he he just said, what are you guys crying about? He took the hemlock because he had decided that this is the right thing to do. So he took, he drank whatever he was given and then he lay down himself and he covered himself also. <laughs> he didn't even wait. Like, he just covered himself. And I know I'm going to die. And then um, he covered himself and then after two minutes, he lowered it again. And so everybody was like, what happened? Because, you know, the assumption is that you don't Close it like that, you go no more, right? You lowered it again. Said, you know, I had borrowed a cock from that person. Make sure that you return the bird, he said. And then he closed it again. Right. Hey, what kind of person would do that? Like, even at that last minute, okay, his life is ebbing out. He's had hemlock. He's, he's, the book is closed. Mm-hmm. And he's thinking, oh, I still have that debt. Make sure that you know, that is returned. It should not be that like now I'm gone and, you know, he'll come back and he'll say, where's my bird? And you all guys will say that, oh, we didn't know about a bird. We ensured that that chap is also going to get. So, so you can imagine, right? This, he's not, he's not um, dull and like that. Right. He's still full of enthusiasm. So- so to to have an enthusiasm and energy, you need to be unselfish. Indeed. Because right. it's very tiring. Stress is very tiring. Yeah. It just feels so exhausted. Even sometimes you know, there's a problem and we have to deal with it and it's too much too much trouble on us. Okay. It's too tired after some time. Yeah, get you food also is I want to take it up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so right. this is yes. the result of a logistic life. Right. Thank you, ma'am. So when there is no personal interest involved. Anyone can be fair, anyone can be served. But when there's no person, personal in, interest involved in my own things, then I will continue to be fair and continue to be served. An illustration serves well to elucid, elucidate this point. A person can climb up a hill by any path, but at the top, the view will be the same. Similarly, a person's view of life will depend on the level of his desire. As the desires are many and gross, his view of the world will be gross. As the desires become subtle and reduce, his view will change. Two people with similar levels of desires will view the world similarly, even if their individual desires are different. You understand this, right? The level of desire is the same. Level of vasanas is the same. Then even if their personalities are very different, they'll still get along. Haven't you seen that? You sometimes say, how come these two get along? There's nothing common in them. They get along because the level of vasanas is the same. 
not what the vasanas are, just the level. In other words, a musician and a scientist with similar number of desires will have the same general views on life. In the lower stages, their fields are but means of garnering an income or fame. So when we are still, we have a lot of vasanas, when you're low in life, you are in a field, any field, whether it's music or science or with corporate world or whatever. Why are you in that field? It is just for garnering an income, just for garnering some fame. You're in that field for that reason. Later, their pursuits will take a significance greater than themselves. But as they grow up, then that field will become more important than themselves. You know, sometimes you, you see that in sports people also. It, the, the game is more important than them. It could be in anything. It, it doesn't matter what the field is. But it is more important than them. And these are the guys who reach the heights of their fields because that is more important than their fields. So I hope this much is clear because now the point is going to change. Is information necessary for wisdom? So you will you'll say, okay, so if my level of desire is false, then will I know all the information? Is information necessary for wisdom? If wisdom is inherent and desires block it, what is the need for information? Isn't that correct? Wisdom is inherent and desires only block. Now, what do you need any information? Why not consider the postulation that the two are the same? When one reflects on the information, the force or influence of the desires is reduced. When one reflects on the information, the force or influence of the desires is reduced. Isn't it? Suppose you have a desire for spending money, but you learn uh, about finance. You learn how to deal with money. So as you understand this thing that you've learned about how to deal with money, the force or the influence of the desire reduces on it. Okay, so let's say you love burgers and then you happen to study about healthy food. As you understand more and more about healthy food, the force of the in, or influence of the desire reduces. What remains, therefore, is wisdom. That which is inherently known comes to the surface. So, so with your information and reflection on that, you manage to reduce the influence of that. So then the in, so so the same theory that therefore becomes that critical. Thus. No particular type of information is required for wisdom. One can go further and downplay the quantum too. This is a little difficult to understand. So no particular type of information is required for wisdom. One can go further and downplay the quantum too. Not a particular type and not a particular amount. Information itself may not be required. Many stages went down the path of devotion, music, community work, and still attained the same stage of wisdom or view of life as the intellectuals did. Hence, wisdom has to do with the reduction of desires and not necessarily information. Information is just one of the many methods of gaining wisdom. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was a great bhakta, devotee of Goddess Kali. Yet his disciple, the great Vivekananda, called him the greatest jnani, intellectual and new. I mean, he's really said that about Sri Ramakrishna. He said that he, uh, Sri Ramakrishna is the greatest intellectual I knew. Suppose he says the greatest bhakta I knew. Okay, that we understand. But he says the greatest intellectual I knew. This seems surprising as Sri Ramakrishna, by his own account, was a bhakti. But emotional or intellectual, at a given stage of development, 
the Bhakta and the Jnani will have the same vision. Knowledge can be compared to reaching 100. Some reach it by adding 1 to 1. Some by adding 10 to 10. Some go by arithmetic progression. Some by geometric. Different people at the moment are at different numbers. Some are at 60. Some at 4. Some at 85. They all reach that number in some manner, usually unique to themselves. The important lines, usually unique to themselves. You know why this line is so important? Is because people have this craze for reading autobiographies. Because somebody something worked for somebody doesn't mean it'll work for me. Reading autobiographies is usually a waste of time. Because if we try to emulate what they did, we may not reach where they reached. I mean, you can read it for the sake of inspiring that somebody put so much hard work and reach where they reach. But it's no good as a form of education because the path is usually unique to them. Whatever number they have reached, that number is their current nature. Things will perforce appear in a particular way to them. Someone at 50 may have reached there by adding 25 to 25. Another by adding 10 to 40. Yet another by adding 1 to 49. However they may have reached, their vision at 50 will be the same. They will say and believe the same things at point 50. Now please understand these numbers are only illustrative. Okay, they're not, There's no real numbers like that. The point is you could have reached the same stage whether you did karma or bhakti or nyan. You could have done a host of different things. You may have not even done karma, bhakti or nyan. You may have been a scientist or a musician and doing your own thing in life and still reach that. So everybody will reach in a very different way. The principles will remain the same. But the actual path will be different for everybody. Yes, Joyce. Um, I just have a question regarding um, the example you gave. Let's say um, I start to read about healthy food and I realize, let's say that burgers are not healthy. But doesn't that mean that I have this information has cre made me um, create another desire, which is to be healthy and to be um, so? It, are there different a difference of desires, some desires that lead us to wisdom and others that lead us to ignorance? So your question is, do some desires lead us to ignorance and some to ignorance? Uh, to ignorance? No. There is no such thing. The most important part of your desire is not what the desire is, but whether you have got governance over that desire. So suppose you have a desire for health. Now you'd say yes. a desire for health is probably better than a desire to for the tongue. But you can get so involved in health that you forgot that you're, this is not a destination. It's just a tool. I see. Yes. So the wisdom is in reaching the a, a level or a point where the desire doesn't override. Yes, um, that's the part. Yes. Because the, then yeah. you can keep growing up. Otherwise, you get stuck somewhere. Yes. All right. That's clear. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, one second. Yes. Mahesh, when you say knowledge is 100, what is meant by knowledge here? Wisdom. When knowledge is 100 means that it means if you call realization 100, that means complete knowledge. That means what? That you see things for what they are. What is enlightenment? At the end of the day, enlightenment is only the capacity to see things for what they are. Now, what are they? They are the Lord Almighty, or they are self, or they are Brahman, whatever word you choose to use. Um, whatever inspi is inspiring to you, you can use that word. You want to say it's all Shiva, or it's all Vishnu, you know, say whatever in the world you want. It doesn't matter. But that final point of enlightenment, we are calling 100. Now, to get to that 100, uh, 
people will go about it different ways. Okay. So wisdom is also hungry at that point. Wisdom. I can't how, hear you. Wisdom. Oh, sorry. There's wisdom. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear you? Does wisdom also reach 100? What do you mean? Wis 100 means realization. Realization means full wisdom. Wisdom means what? They are able to see things for what they are. No difference between knowledge and wisdom. Depends on how you're using the, yes. In Vedanta, yes, knowledge and wisdom is the same thing. Truly, knowledge and wisdom is the same thing, but usually knowledge is understood as information. I know it when we say, we mean that I, I, under, I, I have some intellectual, shallow intellectual comprehension. But in Vedanta, to know it means to do it. If you aren't doing it, you don't know it. So if you're doing it, that's wisdom. Uh, yes, Nadine. Yes, it's um, always very uh, important how your um, answer about governance of the desire should be the focus point so that otherwise it blocks and you don't expand because like you have, you know, you, you, you're nearly blinded by... Uh, um, yeah, this is, is it's very interesting because sometimes when we shift to um, knowledge, let's say you, you shift to Vedanta and, and sometimes you can be so orthodox that you miss the point because then you don't use your intellect and you don't expand and you can be completely, uh, you know, without seeing the larger picture. Yeah, it had, it had struck me 20 years ago when I, did my certifications and you know in the west we we are not vegetarians so so we we started being vegetarians as yoga teachers anyway i was convinced this is another matter but a, a couple um, of uh, colleagues were marrying their son their only son and she was telling me how are we going to eat the the wedding cake and i was telling her i mean I mean, what was the question about the wedding cake? You're going to take a small piece of this, but there are eggs. And I was thinking, my God, I mean, how can they narrow their new shift to such a thing? And how can they not see that, you know, I mean, anyway, if, even if they don't eat, who cares? No one would notice they didn't eat. You know, I mean, it was besides the point. I mean, it was a wedding of their only son. And bringing down this shifting to being a teacher and deciding to be vegetarian only on a wedding cake, it, it was really strange for me. So when our desires are not under governance, then we don't know when it is appropriate and not appropriate. And uh, we don't know when to stick to our guns, when to move away from it. All that requires an intellect. Mm. Otherwise, you're led by desires. Yankee Ji? Uh, yes, Nilakha. You could call it making an intelligent concession. If necessary, yes. Yeah. Making a concession if and when necessary. Yes. Uh, but you could have done it the other way around. Make a vegetarian cake as I did for my child. I said no eggs, no eggs. If you have a vegetarian cake, then there is no... There's no problem in eating the cake then. So the yes, slight yes. shift. That is an option available in India. I don't yes. know whether in France yeah. such an option is oh, available. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, I'm yes, it. but not 20 years ago. Okay, I'm sorry. Years. I, I, I missed, missed the point. Yes, yeah. 25 years ago, I mean, a wedding cake was a wedding cake, Baba. You know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't understand. So, I mean, I'm not saying that you should eat the wedding cake. I have no view because you have to know all the circumstances to decide. The point here is only that when you're carried away by any desire, you don't 
you no longer know whether it's appropriate to stick to the guns or not. Like for instance, now suppose say yes, yes, she should have eaten. Then everybody in India will start now suddenly eating, you know, all sorts of things. But it's not necessary because we have options here. So it all depends. I mean, you know, suppose you say can't eat, uh, won't make a rule, you just can't eat. Um, even a rule like you can't eat a human being. Okay, I think everybody will agree, right? You can't eat a human being. Whatever else you think you can eat, you can't eat a human being. And yet, when those, when that plane crashed in that, uh, whatever, mountains, it crashed. And uh, the only way that person could survive is by eating the others who had died. He didn't kill them, but they were dead. And he was the only survivor. And that's how he survived. He had to eat raw human flesh. Or die. He had that choice. Now, will you condemn that man when he comes back? Will you say, oh, you're a cannibal, you're such a horrible person? It's, it's, you have to, I, I am not saying it is the right thing or wrong thing. I have no view on this matter. It's just, it's a call that he needs to take. That that individual needs to take. A call that he needs to take. It doesn't matter what your call was. What is important is that you took a call based on what you thought was right. It, it doesn't matter what you decided. What is important is how did you come to that conclusion? Because even if you're wrong, even if you used your, if suppose you used your intellect and you turned out to be wrong, you're still better off because you're strengthened your capacity to function on the end. And if you are functioning on the intellect, you can make a right about turn anytime. But if you're functioning on the mind, God help you. Okay, so far so good. Is it anyone or anything? Oh, Lily, are you new to the class, Lily? Yes, ma'am, I'm new to the class. How are you? Okay. How are you? Uh, so, is it okay? Is, is it all comprehensible? or? Uh, I, actually, I joined today a little late. So, initial conversation, I could not uh, connect to you. So, just uh, question answer I uh, heard. Okay. So, is whatever you heard, is it clear? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am getting the point. Yes, uh, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Rupa Atreya, you also are new? I don't think I've seen that name before. Whoever who was Vivo two 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 five. Ganguji, it's me. Sorry? It's me, Uttara. Oh, Uttara, okay. So um okay, so if we are all good with it, let's proceed. So what was our point here? That wherever you have reached, um, it all it, it doesn't matter how you reach there. There are multiple methods of reaching there. And um, there is no one size fits all, especially in a path of growth. Even with children, you'll see that different children grow at a different rate, at different speed, in different ways. They require different things to grow. Uh, so it's exactly the same with us as we grow spiritually. We are spiritual children. So we will grow at our own pace, in our own way, in our own manner. Nobody has to imitate anyone else. But however you manage to reach a certain point, everybody at that point and you will agree. Fanatics find their religion the best and that mm. of all the others to be nonsense. Every single fanatic of every single religion believes that they are so good and everybody else is a complete idiot. And it need not be religion. It can be anything else. It could be political theories. 
those who believe in communism versus those who believe in capitalism. It could be anything. It's nothing really to do with religion. But whenever we become fanatical about anything, we are completely right and everybody else is an idiot. Anyone who disagrees is an idiot. On one end of that spectrum is these fanatics who look at it like that. At the other end of the spectrum, the sages find unity in all. The sages feel everybody is correct. The Rig Veda says, there is one truth. The wise call it different. Ekam satyam vipraha bahuta vadhiti. Vipra means the wise one. Bahuda in various ways vadanti. He means speak of it. speak of it in many, many different ways. There is one truth. The wise call it differently. To condemn a fanatic is to condemn our past self. And when you look at a fanatic, please know that we have all been there. To condemn a fanatic is to condemn our past self. It may not be I've been in this journal, but at some point we have thought like that. There was a phase when we saw it so too. To respect the sage is to respect our future self. For one day, we will also fuse. At some point, we thought only one thing is right and everybody else is an idiot. At some stage, we will think, we will understand how it all fits together and how all of it is true. We have to understand we are on that continuum. This is evident in marriage compatibility too. People try to match their interests with their spouse. But if the level of desires be different, there will be incompatible. Like that driver I told you about. He told me, I, he asked me, do you think it's correct for people to, um, to only marry in their own religion, in their own community? Because now he must have been fed up with all the girls of his community and he's trying to broaden his horizons probably. So you know, the thing is we will match religion. We will match socioeconomic status. We will match interests. But what we don't match and which is the only useful thing to match is the level of desires. People try to match their interests with their spouse. But if the level of desires be different, level of desires means vasana, be different, there will be incompatible. That's why castes were matched in India. It was believed that a Kshatriya boy married to a Brahmin girl would be incompatible. Thus, intercaste marriage was discouraged. A certain proportion of tamas, rajas and sattva would be incompatible with another proportion of tamas, rajas and sattva. Mamita, the levels of desire between a sage and a person at a lower level varies, but the relationship still works because like the sage, because the sage, like Socrates say, is not subject to such issues. Oh, that is not entirely true, Mamita, because Christ's relationship with everybody didn't work, right? They went and crucified him. Uh, Socrates' relationship with everybody didn't work. What that sentence means is that they are at peace with everybody else. It's not necessarily that everybody else is at peace with them. Because other people's peace is dependent on whether you have satisfied their desires or not. And sometimes it's not possible to. Or it's not direct to. But between spouses like Socrates and his wife, she was not at his level. But if she would have been still or <laughs> She was terribly unhappy with him. She, uh, Zantipi was, is considered to be one of the greatest viragos of all time. So she was totally unhappy with him. Krishna's some wife, Satyabhama, was unhappy with him. Hmm. 
okay all you men do not flatter yourself if you are happy if your wife is not unhappy with you don't say i'm socrates okay and another way around for women also we do our best to make our spouses as happy as they can possibly be nine or 10 times they become happy one or 10 times they won't become happy but there's nothing you can do about that so a person is unhappy or happy is it's his thing really we can only provide a conducive environment so the sage will pro- provide the most conducive environment but that person may still continue to be unhappy you know in, in india also how many sages we have heard of right shishupala was not happy with krishna ravana is not happy with rama Rama is very happy with Ravana. Rama, he has no problem with Ravana, but Ravana cannot tolerate Rama. Okay, so it's not necessary that the relationship has to work. Yes, yeah, thank you. So. when they discourage intercaste marriage it was more it was true only if you understood caste correctly today caste is understood as your birth in which case it makes no sense suppose i am born a kshatriya okay and somebody else is also born a kshatriya that doesn't mean i can marry that person because it makes no sense to say that i am a kshatriya because my father was kshatriya makes no sense whatsoever but they match it like that and therefore it doesn't work and therefore they say the theory is wrong or they say it's so stupid your theory you should just throw it in the bin why can't we have intercaste marriage are of course you can have intercaste marriage if you mean intercaste as in birth but vedanta doesn't use it in the sense of birth it uses it in the sense of the three gunas Uh, Lily, since you're new, maybe you'd like to read the previous uh, uh, pages where we spoke about what is caste. Caste is about who you are, not your birth. Then you'll find it if you understand the words properly, you'll find it all. Who you are means how much tamas rajas sattva you have. In. Now, if you've never heard of tamas rajas sattva, yeah, Aditi, I actually I am pursuing MSc in uh, yoga. from svs university so we have that uh, we had that tadvada classes so in that uh, didi explained us uh, regarding same so i am aware of it yeah wonderful okay so that's it for today anybody has any i need to make some alignment yes go ahead uttara yeah uh, so hari om uh, we are in the accounts team 